All right, John Center, we got NXT deadline, which is um, this weekend. Uh, so we're going to preview for you guys here. And so let's do that. So we're going to open up here. And of course, Carmelo Hayes is going to open up the show. And it's going to be him and Alexis King. Lots to talk about there in that opening matchup. Um, on the media call, Shawn Michaels really said they're going to put Lexus King, Brian Pillman Jr., a.k.a. Brian Pillman Jr., also known as, right into the fire. He's going to be, this is, I mean, you talk about the biggest matchup of his career. He never had one to me. Well, he had an MJF matchup on on Dynamite, or um, or I, I think it was Dynamite, but that's as close to a big-time match that Brian Pillman Jr., Lexus King, has had. They're throwing him into the fire. They want to see what he has. Make or break, depending on this, maybe it's a little too much to say. Shawn Michaels, though, see something in this kid. They see something in him. They have to if they're going to put him in this matchup this early against a guy who's well-established in Carmelo Hayes. Is it, to me, the biggest match of Lex King's early career in NXT? Yes. How big a deal is this in your eyes for Alexis King? Is this make or break? this early in his NXT career. Definitely 100%. Uh, it is the biggest match of his career. If he wants his career to continue at the level that not only we as fans expect him to be, but I'm sure he himself, listen, we've seen him on the independence. We've spoken to him. We've even had him on the show, right? There's just something innately about him that draws you to him. It could be the similarity. That he looks like his father, Brian Pillman. It could be the sim- the scenario where, you know, uh, he's bringing a lot of old school things back in and you're, you're, you're seeing some elements, not necessarily on NXT television, but you're seeing, you saw some elements of the loose cannon character that to me was way ahead of its time. And maybe, you know, now it's like, you see that in like a John Moxley, for example, in terms of, you don't know what the guy's going to do type of scenario. If I had to compare it to somebody right now. So yes, you, if I was, if I was Lexus King, I would say yes. It's to me, it's the biggest match of my career because for the longest time we've been hearing nothing but potential about him. The potential, it's there. Oh my God, looks so much like his father, and you know he's really good in the ring. And can he put all the pieces together? You know, he's not a, he's not a, a young guy by any means in terms of, of people. And I, I understand that prime in the career of wrestling it takes a long time. I understand that, but moments like this don't always happen. He's he's been successful everywhere he's gone to a certain point. There's always been something that's been holding him back. Could be possibly himself. Could be possibly management. The biggest company in the world is giving you an opportunity on their platform. And I said this to you before when we found out he signed with WWE and was going to be part of NXT. If he cannot be success, successful now, a lot of it's going to be on him. It has to be now because he's been given every opportunity to do it. And this is his biggest opportunity. If he can show that he is at that level. And I'm not talking about in-ring performance. I mean, not everyone's going to be at the level of a Carmelo Hayes, right? He's, he's very good. He's very athletic. But you need to hold your own and show that you belong. That's what I'm looking forward to in this match. Wins or losses, it doesn't matter because if you show the audience, if you show the, the, the people in the back, and more importantly yourself, that you belong here and you can stand toe-to-toe with the best of them, that's going to be the launching point of the start of his career rather than the end of it. So... It's the biggest match of his career. And that's why I think that upset alert, upset alert. I think Lexus King is going to get the victory over Carmelo Hayes. I don't think so. I think Carmelo only comes out victorious here, but we're going to see Lexus King showcase, hopefully, what he's all about. And I think that while you're you're right that it's not going to matter of victory, I think it will be as having – a victory here because it's going to be, you just mentioned the biggest match of his career and to get him involved. And if you're going to really invest in Lexus King this early, you're going to want to get a victory here. So that's why I'm going to say he comes out with the victory. I say upset alert. This is going to be a shocker uh, because Carmelo is so well established, but he's got that issue with trick Williams that could be on his mind. And the inevitable match with Trick Williams. That's what everybody is looking for. Everyone's looking for that eventual Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes uh, matchup. So I think that he might be overlooking Lexus King here because he could be thinking, this is in the bag. I got him. So that's the worst thing you can do with that mindset. And, you know, for a guy like Carmelo, looking ahead could be a detriment for him. So I'm going to say Lexus King pulls off the upset victory 
Uh, and like you said, to catapult his rise, his quick rise in NXT. And hey, listen, they're all for it, man. They see something in this kid, right? So I think that if they might as well see it, hey, let's go full blast, man. Let's give him this big, huge, monumental victory over a guy like Carmelo. And I'm all for it, dude. I'm all for it. I want to see where this guy goes. I mean, he didn't have, he didn't have that opportunity in, in AEW, a lot of starts and stops, but now NXT. The D platform is giving him that opportunity. All right, trendsetter steel cage match, Roxanne Perez and Kiana James. You know, it's been a little bit of a, um, I would say kind of like her momentum. Roxanne has kind of slowed down a little bit, perhaps the injuries, but she's somebody that should be in the, you know, NXT women's championship. Um, fold in in that aspect and now she's gonna be in the steel cage this is very personal but i think that roxanne Perez is gonna bounce back and i think she's gonna get the victory in the steel cage because i still think that you know there and she's still very young she's still so young right the prodigy i think that you know this is gonna be another catapult back into the nxt women's championship picture and i think that she gets the victory over canada james I'd agree. I think the way the storyline's going, that's what's going to end up happening here. She's definitely lost a lot of momentum, and that's definitely uh, been something. You said it could be detriment to injury. It could be the mere fact, too, that scenario-wise, I don't think she came off on camera as somebody that was very likable as much as she tried her demeanor to be that way. So I kind of looked at it as I, I, I couldn't wait for her to lose, in a sense. But I think she's going to come out victorious on this one. Uh, you know, and that's a great point that she made, too. You know, sometimes when you're that, kind of goody two shoes and you're just too good and it's just very tough for you to want to root for that person all the talent in the world but it's kind of been sidetracked a little bit injuries may have played a key factor but i think we're all in agreement there uh with roxanne perez all right the nxt north american championship trendsetter is on the line dirty diamond Sierra will defend his championship against dragon lee before we get to my predictions on this one i just want to say one thing and being able to watch SmackDown tonight and getting a chance to add this critique uh, to this preview to me is kind of where I kind of got my blood boiling a little bit because here's the thing. Dragon Lee, I don't want to get to the point where he's losing to Santos Escobar all the time and he's jobbing out. He got called up to the main roster and now he's doing this because unfortunately the uh, back injury to Wesley because if not this would have been Wesley and obviously most likely would have been Wesley regaining the NXT North American Championship from Dominic Mysterio but unfortunately we wish you the best of luck Wesley we hope uh, you come back it's a serious back injury he's going to be at 8 to 12 months and again uh, you hate to see that but I'm not a fan of the booking of Dragon Lee right now because he's losing more than I would like for him to do so. If he's going to be a viable option on the main roster, then he's got to get some wins here. So the dilemma is Dragon Lee is already on the main roster. Do you want a North American championship to change hands and take the momentum away from Dom if it wasn't going to be Wesley? I want to say Dirty Dom wins this one. But again, I hate to do this because I just think it's killing the momentum for Dragon Lee because I don't want him to lose too much. And I think he's doing that already early on the main roster. And this the video packages have been awesome. I think he's a super talent. I I totally agree with Rey Mysterio that this guy could be the next face of Lucha Libre. But I just I just don't like the early losses for 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 Dragon Lee. And on top of all that, I have him losing to Dominic Mysterio. Go figure, right? But uh, I I I just hope things turn around for Dragon Lee because he's super talented. He is super talented, and it's frustrating to watch the fact that the momentum he got when he first debuted in NXT to it kind of dwindled a little bit. Then he was moved up to the main roster. And it hasn't been exactly, I'm sure, what he expected to be. Now coming back down to NXT to fill in a spot. It's tough, man, in terms of a booking standpoint, because I honestly don't see Dom losing this at all. I see Dom retaining the title. I think right now the North American title makes more sense to be on Dominic Mysterio because you need to have that 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 heel, that hate. In terms of talking about nuclear heat, nobody has more nuclear heat than Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. So the mere fact to take it off him for a, a feel-good story in terms of the uh, the uh, good guy coming out on top, I don't see it right now. And I'm, I'm really concerned, too, because Dragon Lee is very talented right now, but the way he's being presented and you could debate back and forth do wins and losses really matter in wrestling yes and no but it's also perception of it as well and i think in in the long run it's hurting him a little bit more 
So I don't see him coming victorious on this one, but there has to be a scenario where there needs to be a focus on Dragon Lee. If they are going to, you know, put a lot more emphasis on him in terms of him being, let's say, possibly the next Rey Mysterio, for example, then you can't have scenarios like this where you put him in situations where it's it's a no-win for him. And, and that's the scenario he's in right now. I don't think it's a no-win scenario for him. If he wins the title, people will be against it. If he loses, which I think he will, and, and Dirty Don will come out victorious, then, oh, my God, you're burying this guy, and this guy, you know, you're, you're booking him wrong type of mentality. And I think that's what we're going to get at the end of the night. The Women's Iron Survivor Challenge. Now, this is the first time that we've actually previewed an NXT deadline. Last year, I think we just, you know, we weren't able to. And so the concept is 25-minute match after all five men are in there. So every five minutes, two guys will start. Every five minutes, a new guy will be there. It's five guys uh, and five ladies. And so that's the concept of the match. If you lose a pinfall, you go into the penalty box for... 90 seconds so we're going to talk about the women's survivor match and there's of course is the men's but um let's talk about the women's first trendsetter and let me tell you this you've got tiffany you got tiffany stratton blair davenport lash legend kalani jordan and fallon henley in this matchup all right i was going to say tiffany stratton but after lash legend body slammed otis <laughs> otis my God, you got to capitalize on this. It is going to be a little shocker and another upset. But Lash Legend, you got to capitalize on her body slamming Otis, man. The crowd went nuts. That thing went viral. You literally body slammed Otis, man. This wasn't a hip toss, okay? This wasn't like Yokozuna being hip tossed by Lex Luger. This was a body slam. Crazy power by Lash Legend. And I think she wins this one in a shocker because you need to capitalize on the body slam from NXT the other night. Listen, capitalizing and changing the the trajectory of a superstar are two completely different things, in my opinion, Jeff. Yes, are they going to capitalize it? Of course. You know what? The way they're going to capitalize on capitalize off it with Lash Legend is going to be the fact that she's going to be dominant in this match. They're going to showcase her and make her look like a million dollars. Ever rightfully, rightfully so, right? In terms of what she did to Otis. But to me, it's Tiffany Stratton. To me, she is the star right now, still currently of that women's division. She sees the face of that division and we still haven't seen scenario we, we thought she was gonna have an opportunity overcoming becky lynch that didn't end up happening but she showcased herself on a different level i think that momentum for her hasn't dwindled in my opinion so as much as yes we we like to give people who's gained who've gained that momentum that opportunity i don't think that's what's going to cause her to come out victorious here we're going to showcase tiffany stratton in the end becoming victorious and still being the face of that women's division until somebody can prove her wrong it's a great start. I hate to say and diminish something like body slamming Otis as a launching pad as opposed to let's get it right then and there. But, hey, we all know this is a waiting game, Jeff. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So right now I got Tiffany Stratton coming out victorious in this one. And guess who's back, baby? Nikita Lyons is back. Oh, is she ever back, man? Did you see her re-debut on uh, NXT? It's been a long time, but glad that she's back because, again, she's easy on my eyes nikita welcome back to nxt looking forward to what you're doing uh hopefully uh you know hopefully 2024 is going to be your year but glad that she's back as well all right gentlemen, the men's survivor challenge iron survivor challenge again um you got guys like braun breaker in it you've got josh briggs who actually you actually got to see here wrestle locally here in jersey um you've also got uh, hey, yeah, you got Dijak, who've also we've seen too, and um, Taylor Bate, who's actually going rumors about him being called up to the main roster. Uh, Trick Williams again, Braun Breaker, trendsetter. This is Trick Williams' time. Yeah, it's really have to discuss Trick. this right now. Trick Williams, all the way here. I mean, we love to see the other guys there, and it's going to be a great match. And it's going to be super talented. I'm sure, like you know, the momentum that Braun Breaker had and then Josh Briggs and then also Taylor Bate, the, the rumors of him possibly going to the main roster. Uh, so good. Die Jack, we've seen him wrestle before in the past. Really good wrestler, but it's all about Trick Williams right now. And uh, there can't be a doubt right now. If there's ever a, uh, if you're a Betty man and there's ever a sure thing. Now watch, now watch, that something's going something's to happen. Maybe Carmelo shows his true colors and yeah, actually yeah. costs Trick Williams, right? You never know, but Interference aside, I think, again, Trick Williams is the man, and it's just going to add to that seed that now Trick is the future, and where does that leave Carmelo Hayes? So obviously uh, it's going to be very interesting, but to me that's uh, 
that's going to be a really good match, but you got to go with Trick in this one. All right, the main event, the NXT Championship is on the line. It's going to be Ilya Dragunov against Baron Corbin, the Dragon and Baron Corbin. Props to Baron Corbin, man. This is the Baron Corbin I've always wanted to see. I've known he's been, I know he's it's always been there, but again, it just shows you that he's that kind of guy that's dependable. He can do the comedy. He can be that bad guy. He can be that com- comedic bad guy. But he needed a change of pace. He needed a new scenery. And it has been a blessing in disguise for a guy like Baron Corbin uh, going back to NXT. You can go home again, trendsetter. And I think that um, it's just been a totally different Baron Corbin. Kudos to him. This is the guy that's always been there who, who we've known can do it. We've loved, we loved everything he's done, but it's time he gets back to that Baron Corbin character, and this is really great, and they're going to have a very good match. But I got to go with the with the Dragon here, with uh, Ilya Dragunov, the victorious. But I think it's going to be one of the matches of the night. Dragon versus the Lone Wolf, man. So everybody wants to see this yeah. match. They've been looking forward to it. The storytelling for this has been great, and uh, not necessarily for, um, for anything in terms of with Baron Corbin, and I'll make this short and sweet, right? Because I want to get, I could talk for hours about in terms of how his career has progressed from the ups and downs, right? When you look at everything he's done, and, and he can do it all, really. He's proven it from the comedic sides to the hateful, the nuclear hero, all that stuff. But what's so cool about it, when we first saw the version of, of Baron Corbin in NXT, it was a cool aspect. It got brought up to the main roster, and then it just didn't have any momentum. You could say it was management. It was people who were in control back then. They probably didn't know what to do with the guy like Baron Corbin. That's why he went through so many versions that he did on the main roster. All to his success, I must say. I said Happy Corbin. I wasn't a big fan of Happy Corbin, but he did his best. Now with this scenario, it feels more that word that we all look for in terms of when we see people, either they figure it out or you see, okay, now this is what we've always, we've been, we've been waiting to see. It feels authentic. It feels real. And Baron Corbin has now come to a level where, can you go home again? Yeah, of course you can. But when you're going home, finally leaving as a boy and coming back as a man, this is the man of Baron Corbin. Coming back and you're a man now. You know what you are. You know what you bring to the table. We know all the great things that he can do in the ring athletically uh, for a guy his size in Baron Corbin. But the psychology, the ability of now having the nod and say, this is the badass we wanted for so long. And it's not at a detriment to anybody else. It's just showcasing this is Baron Corbin. This is what he can do. And this is a, a legit threat to the Dragon's title reign. So I don't think it's going to happen. I think the champ's going to retain. But, man, what a great opportunity. And what a great thing to see a guy like Baron Corbin finally have that it factor and realizing to steal word from Chris Jericho. It. It's great, man. It's great to watch. It's going to be a great match, man. It's going to be a great night of wrestling. Of course, NXT on Saturday from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And make sure... To catch us after NXT deadline, we'll be with you guys for our NXT uh, post reaction show on IG Live. So follow us on our IG at High Spot Podcast. And uh, yeah, man, definitely too. And you can also listen to us here and watch us here on the Gives a Shot Network. Uh, like and subscribe, download, and also on all social media platforms, you can just follow High Spot Podcast. And on all podcast platforms, we are also, you can also listen to us. So definitely do that and download the episodes. Uh, HSP podcast guys you can if you don't like watching ugly mugs at least listen to it for grass listen to our our sexy ass voices but uh, Corey Jade man a lot of rumors that she might be on the return so definitely looking forward to her and man that woman's division just loaded man you add Corey Jade into the mix that's crazy man and with CM Punk returning and then you see how Corey Jade was a huge fan she kind of maybe gave away last week and CM Punk was returning or she had an idea or something like that because yeah that pick and then deleted it but Corey Jade who uh is coming back uh if not on Saturday sooner than later but there are rumors that she'll be there good to have her in the fold and just adds another person to this woman NXT women's division it is loaded the women's uh, rosters now are loaded on Raw and SmackDown and NXT is bringing the heat here with uh with the with the ladies as well uh and then you've got a kickoff matchup also too with Axiom and Nathan Frazier they're going to tear the house down great matchup to kick it off I'll go give me Nathan Frazier there uh with the victory uh at uh at to kick off things for NXT but a great Weekend of Wrestling Trend Center, and we've got all the action for you covered with us here at HSP.